Hi everyone, Stefano here from Soto Zen channel. Welcome to this new video. I hope you enjoy this short animation that I prepared for you. And in this video, I will show you how I animate this. This is not intended to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, by the way. Instead, I will show you how I animated this, focusing on the most important part and trying my best to explain to you how to improve your animation skills. I will use this little guy here that I've previously modeled and rigged. And if you are interested in learning how to do so, be sure to watch these tutorials that I've made. So we have a lot to talk about. Let's get started. I'd like to start by taking a look at the Rigify control panel. What I'm going to do is a cartoonish style animation. So I want only the main and common controllers to be visible and also all these hair controllers that I have made are not part of the Rigify. So I selected them all and I moved them on a different armature layer. Let's make visible the arms and legs IK controls and also the torso and fingers. I don't need anything else. And now I can start animating. I want him to sneak walk slowly holding his gun and being ready to shoot if necessary. I have the sci-fi gun parented to the hand bone. So moving the hand controller, I can move and rotate the gun itself. In case you don't know, in order to parent an object to a skeleton, enter pose mode, select the proper bone, in my case the hand, shift S to move the cursor there, back in object mode, select the gun, shift S, selection to cursor this time, and now position the gun properly, pose mode once again to be sure you have the right bone selected, and then back again in object mode, select the gun, Shift select the rig, Ctrl P, choose set parent to bone. And now as you can see, the object is following the armature movement. Back here to the bone positioning for our animation, I put the other hand under the gun magazine. And optionally you may want to have this second hand bone to follow the first one using the child of bone constraint. But I decided to let this free and hopefully it will not be so difficult to animate them at once later. Now it's time for the legs to be positioned and I'm working quite fast in order to avoid this tutorial to be too long. However, whenever I move my character, I always watch it from different sides to check and correct its balance point. Always ask yourself if your character would stay upright if it would be a toy in the real world. If you have dubs, don't hesitate to stand up and try yourself the position or the movement. In this way, you will have a better idea of what's going on to your balance. Now that I'm satisfied with the starting position, pressing I, I insert rotation and location keyframes for each one of the controllers that I'm going to use. I usually start only animating the hip, the feet, the hands, and the shoulders, and the pole controllers for arms and legs. I animate the heel bone to give more the idea of a sneak working. And the main object, of course, is the hip bone that goes up and down and slows down and then falls down. And as you can see, I created a contact position with the heel of the forward leg and then a sort of spring movement and whenever I need my action to be more fast, I used to select the keyframes and scale them on the X axis. And when doing this, always remember to polish the F curves later. You don't want any unnecessary bumps on your graphic editor. For this action here, I kept six to eight frames for the hip bone to going up and then only three frames when going down. I tried my best to make a convincing shift of the body weight from one foot to the other. I can say that this was the most difficult part of this little animation. I didn't use loops. I animated 
all of the steps that it will do. I don't care too much how I did it the last one. I animate any new step along the way and in the end this creates some small difference that tells you didn't copy and paste your animation and I like that. I always try to do this when possible. Because I set the hands to be child of the torso bone, I didn't care of the upper body during this phase of the animation. To set the relationship level of the hands bone in Rigify is very easy. Simply choose from this menu here the option that you need and Rigify will update for you the parenting. When animating, don't try to add too many details at the beginning. If you have a clear idea on your mind of what you're going to do, you will not be scared seeing your character moving like a robot or missing some parts. Important is not to miss the goal. Animation is a layer work, like drawing, by the way. You start blocking down the main shapes, the proportion, and then later, eventually, you add details and colors. Same in animation, start animating the simple and then eventually you add details. Now that I have the basic of the three steps in place, I want him to turn quickly and shoot without thinking. So I will end this last step and when the hip is on the lowest position, I start rotate the hip controller on the Z axis. I want him to turn and jump backward and in this phase I start also animate the pole target for the legs. In fact, rotating the hip in a few frames makes the knees position to be bad sometimes and you have to rotate accordingly the pole bone in order to fix the knee position. And this will make your animation looks more correct. And now I start animating the landing phase. Notice that until now I didn't place a single keyframe for the hands. And that's because they are driven by the main hierarchy, like we said before. This is the magic of the IK solving. However, I often avoid this because uh, to be able to animate freely the movement of the hands independently by your hips, it gives you the opportunity to add more realism to your animation. But in this case, for the purpose of this fast animation tutorial, I think that it was working quite nicely in this way. I am now at the moment where the hands will grab firmly the gun and prepare to fire. Here I begin to animate the fingers for the first time. I need the second hand to change its position. So I insert keyframes for rotation and scale. In fact, the fingers in Rigify are easily animated rotating and scaling on the X axis in order to open and close them. Be sure to be in local view and with the individual origin option selected. I wanted the shot to be powerful enough to make his arms to be uh, strongly moved almost over the head. Here I also rotate the head and torso to exaggerate the recoil effect of the gun. I used only two frames to make this happen. Also I animate some basic shape keys that I prepared previously. If you are interested in learning how to make face shape animation, be sure to watch my tutorial regarding this. And then I made him recover position and balance control after the firing. And finally, I had the idea to make him let fall his hands and shoulders in a shot of disappointment for his behavior. So I imagine that the gun was quite heavy and I animate the two hands to fall down separately. And then I also animated some sort of swing effect for the hand that is free. And to add some detail, I also made the gun to bounce on the floor. And now is when I started going backward to adjust details and edit some part of the animation. 
and once again like in drawing for example your eyes tend to get habit to what you're doing so going back and watching my work from the beginning even if it was only 10 or 20 minutes before made me spot mistakes that i was not able to see before of course the best thing to do is to wait at least the day after but this is intended to be a speed tutorial so I'm sure that re-watching this tomorrow I will not be that much happy. Finally I unhide the hair controllers and I add some movement to them to follow the jump and the firing action. Using a sphere and a cube primitives with a simple emission shader I added those graphic elements to add some cartoonish dynamic. And then I also animated a point light to lit my character when he fired. So I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully soon enough I will be able to talk in English while I'm working because I really love to make this kind of tutorials in uh, a more live way. However, if you like this tutorial, please let me know in the comment and don't forget to subscribe my channel. As always, this entire Blender scene will be available to be downloaded at my Patreon page. If my videos are somehow helping you to develop your professional or personal skills, please consider becoming a supporter of mine. Making these kind of videos is very time consuming, as you probably can imagine, and, and sponsoring me will help me in the making of more digital content like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and see you soon with another great video. Ciao!